Welcome to another of the planner example. This time we'll be looking at the meeting scheduling example. Um, so in this example, we have to assign meetings to a room and to a, a time, a starting time. So for example, we have this uh, meeting about engaging sustainable user experience in the new economy, uh, this green meeting, right? And uh, that meeting we've decided it will be in room one and it will start at eight o'clock. Uh, at the same time, we have another meeting about cross-selling, compelling multitasking in action, as you can see here, and uh, that will be held in room four. All right. Um, now, the interesting thing about this example is that not all meetings have the same duration. So, for example, this particular meeting lasts one hour and 45, uh, actually two hours, as you can see, right, from eight o'clock until 10 o'clock. But uh, other meetings like this uh, brown one, it's, it is only 15 minutes. Uh, or, for example, this yellow one is actually 45 minutes, right? So uh, they, are all, they, they are in a different, uh, they all take a different duration. You can see some are actually quite long, take up to four hours some of the meetings, while others are uh, much less. Now, um, so um, this is a little bit different from the other examples in Opta Planner because it uses something called the time grain pattern to deal with this. Uh, what we basically do is we split the time up into uh, 50 uh, into a granularity of 15 minutes. So we have 8 o'clock, 8.15, 8.30. And the meeting can start at uh, any of those uh, grains. So it can start at 8 o'clock at 8.15. Um, because if we would I will allow a meeting to start at, let's say, 8.12, then um, that's not really interesting because uh, humans cannot deal with such a uh, fine accuracy. We can only start meetings uh, at an accuracy of 15 minutes in this case. Uh, maybe for your use case, of course, that might be every five minutes, or if you're dealing actually with machines, you might actually use a much smaller uh, granularity than uh, even minutes. But in this particular use case, uh, 15 minutes is, is, is the ideal uh, granularity. Um, so in this case, we do have a, a number of constraints, of course. Now, the first constraint is quite obvious. We can only hold one meeting in one room at the same time. So you see, for example, that while one the green meeting is held in this room, there's no other meeting uh, being held at the same time. So that means that um, uh, another meeting cannot just be in the same room at the same time, starting at the same time. It actually should not overlap at any uh, during at any point during the same time. So we cannot start a meeting. Um, uh, let's say this orange meeting, we cannot start it at 8.30 in room one because then it will partially overlap with uh, the green meeting, right? So that's the first thing, room conflicts, right? Um, now the second uh, rule is that uh, we don't want to go in overtime, of course. We have a certain time window, which is number of days. Um, we're now scheduling up till the 5th of January, but we cannot actually go, uh, you know, use more time than that. That's quite obvious. And um, the next thing is, of course, um, uh, attendance, right? So we have a number of persons. Let's take a look at the persons here. Number of persons, you can see them on the left here, which are uh, want to go to some of these meetings. Now, uh, a person doesn't want to go to all the meetings. Uh, each person wants to go to a number of meetings he considers as required. And he, uh, he or she um, also has a number of preferred meetings often. So for example, you can see that this first person here uh, wants to uh, go to the green meeting, right? So that's required and he can do that. He can go from eight till 10, there's no problem. He has no other commitments at that time. We can see that this other person, Andre and Lucas also wanna to go to that meeting. Now you can see it for Andre, it's a preferred meeting, but he can go, so that's fine. Uh, but for Lucas, it's a required meeting, so he can go, so that's, uh, uh, that's not just fine, that's actually required, right? So um, that is the difference between hard and, and soft constraints, right? Actually hard and medium constraints in this case. So um, all the people who are required to go to a meeting, if they can, if they have to attend two required meetings at the same time, then we break a hard constraint. Now you can see that's not the case because we have zero hard constraints broken. And also if you actually look through this, you will see that at no time, one person has to go to two meetings that he is required to go to at the same time. Um, also, of course, we want to make sure that people can go to their preferred meetings too. It's a little bit more difficult because um, it's actually not possible to go to all preferred meetings in this data set, I believe. But um, most of the case, this, this is true. So for example, if you look at that first person, we can see, um, if you look at the required and preferred one, you can see that it can actually visit most meetings up to this a particular meeting actually where he has to go to two meetings at the same time um, 
Niet has to go, wants to go. It's a prefer two preferred meetings. So we lose actually lose some points for that. And you can see that we actually have this case 18 times. So uh, in 18 times, uh, we will somebody will have to drop out of their preferred meetings, of of one of their two preferred meetings, right? Um, now, uh, so that's the attendance. Um, uh, uh, constraint. Then of course we have something called room capacity. All of the rooms have a certain capacity and uh, we need to make sure there's enough room for all the people attending um, um, that uh, particular meeting which is scheduled in that room. Uh, so we take that into account too of course. That's of course a hard constraint again, uh, the room capacity. And um, beyond that we have one other uh, constraint which is a soft constraint which says we want to do all the meetings as soon as possible so we want to move all the meetings to the front of the schedule and um, this is just a number which counts uh, the number of um, uh, grains that people are meeting starts later than than January 8 o'clock so this will never be zero of course but uh, it does push all the meetings to the front of the schedule which is, is nice to have so when new meetings uh, that we didn't account for actually would be scheduled, it would be added to the end. So let me just see, let me just show how this works when we start from an empty thing. So we have an, an empty schedule, no January, no rooms uh, filled in, and we have our meetings over here, right? So as you can see, uh, cross-selling, profitize, transform, engage, downsize, uh, synergies, and all that kind of stuff. Um, do we want to schedule these meetings? So let's start solving this, right? Uh, now, if we, we can see that it's here, we can see the score that we found. Uh, it's actually not showing the results in the screen. Why? Because um, constantly refreshing the screen is actually, uh, actually slows down the application, actually hangs the application. So I've not enabled this here, as you can see in the uh, bottom right. But um, I'll give it a little bit of time. Now we're getting a quite a good schedule after a few seconds. Uh, so let's stop this and you can see this is the schedule. And as you can see in this case, there are no hard constraints broken um, because everybody can go to all the meetings that they are required to go to. And here you can see sometimes they do have to go to two meetings at the same time. Uh, they want to go to, this is a preferred meeting again. So again, we have some medium constraints broken. If we give it some more time, then uh, we can actually lower this to 18 as, as we've seen, um, but um, uh, it works and it's a good and it's a feasible schedule and it's uh, much better than one which would actually uh, figure out by hand. So, um, so a little bit more about the time grain pattern uh, before I end this, this session. Um, so there are different ways, different design patterns on how to deal with assigning to time in OptoPlanner. Um, and the best design, so the interesting design patterns, we've documented those. And so um, what we see in many cases is where the, 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 the duration of, of something that needs to be scheduled is fixed. And then you can use the time slot pattern, which we use in the course scheduling example, right? So for example, the core chemistry lesson takes one hour, but the math, all the lessons takes one hour. So we just schedule them to a time slot, right? While in this particular case, we are using the time grain pattern where we say, okay, we use a granularity of 15 minutes and we assign the starting time. So the sales meeting starts at zero, the architects meeting starts at, at time grain one, which 15 minutes later, if you see on the bottom, on the top, right? So that's a different way of designing the, the domain model. And um, this allows you to do, to have a, a much lower, you uh, know, have uh, meetings in different durations. And there's actually a third uh, pattern too, which is a chain, chain through time pattern, which is used in vehicle routing or um, usually in when tasks need to be assigned. And the nice thing about those is that uh, it works well, very well when there are no gaps or when the gaps are very uh, deterministic. Like if you work two hours, you want a 15 minutes uh, break. Um, <clears throat> The interesting thing about this is that um, we're not going to granularity to, to, to we're not going to use some sort of granularity. We're just going to start and ask task when the previous one is done. So when, uh, in this case, the taxes of, of uh, the Netherlands have been calculated, that uh, Beth will start at her, her next task doing the Belgium taxes, for example, right? Um, uh, now, it depends, of course, on your use case, what's the best one to use um, if you're dealing with time. But it is interesting to know that you have these options available and uh, each of them has their advantages. Uh, their, their, the, you know, use the right tool for the right job, use the right design pattern for the right use case. Uh, and each of one has, of course, some limitations in its design. Um, now, 
you probably think why not just simply say okay um use a very f small time grain like a time grain of one second or even one millisecond or one nanosecond now you can do that um and the partner supports that of course but the problem with that is that you um, if you don't need a one minute or a, a one millisecond or one nanosecond granularity, you actually need a 15 uh, minute case, for example, when you're scheduling humans, is, this is usually the case. Um, then you're going to uh, increase the, the search space a lot and it's going to be much, much harder to find something. Uh, you will need far more CPU power to, to do that. So, um, actually uh, applying the, and you will get results that you don't want because there is no point in starting a meeting at 15 nanoseconds after five minutes after uh, nine o'clock right because um, humans don't show up on a nanosecond accurate accuracy of course right okay so um, thanks for uh, listening to this uh, example and I hope you enjoyed it bye